all this is dr mobin sayed from drbean.com welcome to one more show so today's talk is super interesting it is about the berberine and a study in which they demonstrated that berberine was able to only by 4 months use of 1 gram daily berberine berberine was able to reduce the plaque size in the atherosclerotic blood vessels and i just saw a comment from ceo ban over here asking that is it about uh, kidney stones so uh, there are actually studies that say that even kidney stones can be associated with subclinical atherosclerosis although we see more impact on the on the cardiovascular system heart specially so with this let's start a discussion i did a small change today and that is that the references i wrote them down on this page and i have actually linked this video over here as well this page's link is present in the description this way you can actually see the reference and have the video plus it allows me to present to you my previous talks about berberine in one place so i think it is an improvement over just the description having all the references and you having to sift through them so i hope this makes sense secondly this is dr bean's courses now we are ready for the courses what we will what will happen is that in the coming days we will continue to launch one course at one time and for example we have already launched chest x-ray course and as you can tell this actually is a video with two cmes it's 2 hours and it is already present in the overall course material which in the description of this video there is a link that gives you access to everything at a very low cost actually you'll be amazed for how low but that will go away as we continue to move with these courses and keep bringing them up to speed so take advantage of that link before the courses are the only way to get access now this is the study the study says berberine treats atherosclerosis via a vitamin like effect down regulating choline tma tma o production pathway in gut microbiota so we'll discuss that today this is the reference as i showed you i have done some videos before as well about berberine they are present on the youtube here is one this is the berberine liver and and metabolic health this one is berberine and type 2 diabetes game changer this is berberine its side effects toxicities and contraindications and finally something about the ldlr genes so with this let's start our discussion with my drawings so these are gifts for humanity they are continuing and this particular study is published in signal transduction and targeted therapy in nature july 2022 pretty recent and i want to show you the result of it and then we'll go in the details so that if you just wanted to stop after this you can at least see the result these pictures are of the atherosclerotic plaques that is the tiny plaques in the blood vessels which can actually keep becoming bigger and bigger eventually they can rupture they can cause heart attacks they can cause strokes and many other issues and they can just simply cause narrowing of blood vessels and disrupting the cardiovascular system's dynamics so here there are patients and if you see up here this these uh, circulated parts are the i'm trying to see which one is the best so here this part is actually showing a plaque before berberine then this patient was given berberine for 4 months 1 gram daily and look at the plaque size the plaque size actually literally reduced in size this is patient number 2 and once again this is the plaque size and this is the plaque size after 4 month use this is the plaque size in patient number 3 and this is the plaque size after 4 months use this is again patient number 4 and then plaque size reduction they had 21 patients so that's why it's a small study but do you know something interesting they also had patients who had 
standard drugs like statins and clopidogrel, etc., aspirins, blood thinners type drugs and statins to reduce the cholesterol levels. And guess what happened? Even when the patients were on those drugs, their plaque size still increased. Berberin patients were the ones whose plaque sizes actually reduced. That I think is a marvelous uh, outcome. So if you read this whole study, the most important sentence or the finding is this, that the plaque sizes with other interventions continued. So this is the description of this video and I wanna, uh, this uh, picture, and I wanna share some ideas from here. Berberin reduced the plaque size in patients with atherosclerosis. The ultrasonic images of atherosclerotic plaque circle in white of the patients at different positions of carotid arteries. So carotid artery being the arteries inside the heart, the main arteries of the heart. And after four months, berberine therapy are shown, including the common carotid artery. Common carotid, ar sorry, um, why am I saying carotids? So common carotid arteries are here in the neck. So <laughs> then a participant number one, plaque number one, the carotid bifurcation. Carotid bif bifurcation is carotid arteries are actually on the side of the neck. These are called common carotid. Then they become bifurcated into internal carotid and external carotid. Then they go towards the head. Okay, so then as you can see patient number 16 and others, so that is one. Then if you see here, this green part, B, the average black score in patient was decreased by 3.2% after oral berberine for four months 0 0.5 gram bid so 500 milligram twice daily for four months score value was still increased by 1.9 percent after treatment with conventional drug combination including rosuvastatin aspirin clopidogrel sulfate or tica grelor after those traditional medications, the plaque was still increasing, maybe slowly, but still increasing by 1.9%. On the other hand, when the berberine was given, plaque reduced by 3.2%. So the, the fight is not this between the drugs that, hey, one is 1.9% and how less is this? Is it 1% or 0.5%? It's actually 3.2% reduction versus 1.9% growth. Then in the C picture, the average carotid intima media thickness was reduced by 3.2% for oral treatment. And the value was slightly increased in the combination therapy. So the intima and media, a blood vessel, which is slightly larger blood vessel, actually has various layers in it. So there, are, there is the endothelial layer or the most inner layer. And then as you continue to go outwards, so the most inner layer, intima, then media. Intima means internal, media means middle, and then adventitia, which is outside. So what they're saying is that the, so let me ex explain one more thing. In the blood vessels, when the plaques start developing, they develop under the intima layer and in the media and intima, and that is how they push the blood vessel and kind of make a bulge in it. So of course you want the thickness of the blood vessel that is abnormal thickness to start improving. And that is what they saw here. If you see, see here, the average carotid intima media thickness was reduced by 3.2% after oral treatment. And the value was slightly increased by 2% in the combination therapy. Then the picture number D, the average carotid plaque length in patient was decreased by 2.2%. So picture number D, this plaque length reduced by 2.2%. In the either oral group or combination drug group after four months therapy. TMA and TMA O level in feces and plasma. So I'll explain them and then we'll see what does this mean. So the first takeaway that patients on berberine, patients of atherosclerosis on berberine can actually expect, and here is the demonstration, 
that their plaques will reduce instead of grow slowly. That's a huge deal. And my apologies that I confuse coronary arteries with the carotid arteries. So here, how did Berberin do this action? That is the beautiful most thing that I read. Microbiota. And here is why this is interesting. They said, the researchers, they said, Berberin when taken orally, only about 1% of it becomes bioavailable in our circulation. Just 1%. However, the effect of berberin is quite large. So there may be something in the gut that is helping. So they started chasing that what is berberin doing in the gut? And they found out that berberin was actually entering the microbiota and changing the behavior of the microbiota and through which it helped the atherosclerotic plaques and reduce the the potential for cardiac heart cardiac events or cardiovascular events, even strokes. Very interesting. So how did they do that? How did berberin work with microbiota? So this is the interesting thing. So as we eat red meat or animal pluck, we produce phosphatidylcholine, that is part of the meat. What we produce, but the meat has that, and so we get that phosphatidylcholine, and that enters microbiota. We're talking GIT within the lumen of the GIT, the microbiota is such a beautiful thing. So the phosphatidylcholine enters the microbiota inside the these pathogens or bacteria. It's not necessary that they are pathogen; they are actually friendly as well. Some of them are bad. So inside these. Uh, microbial creatures, the phosphatidylcholine is changed to or converted to choline. Then there is an enzyme called CUT-C or choline TMA lyase, this enzyme. This enzyme takes the choline and converts that to TMA. The TMA is then further converted to TMAO by another enzyme called flavin containing monooxygenase or FMO. What is the summary of this? When we eat meat or animal plug, our microbiota produces TMA and TMO. And there are two enzymes that are involved in this process. The TMA and TMAO are known to cause vascular inflammation and atherosclerosis. So there are studies that demonstrate that microbiota is actually participant in the atherosclerotic plaque formation by contributing inflammatory mediators. And there are many studies that, that are nowadays targeting microbiota to try to figure out, can we help the microbiota produce lesser of inflammatory mediators to reduce the effect on the body? And guess what berberine does? So when berberine is also taken, berberine goes and disrupts both of these enzymes. And it's actually such a ticklish mechanism, beautiful mechanism. What happens is that when berberine enters a pathogen, it is converted in there as dihydroberberine. So when the berberine is changed, the hydrogen bonds or the hydrogen molecules or atoms that are actually used, these actually go back and forth between berberine. It's an unstable molecule. So because of this moving between berberine and dihydroberberine, Berberin allows the protons or hydrogen ions to be given to these two enzymes. And the result of that is that these enzymes, when they receive hydrogens, they become non-functional. So what does berberin does? It does very similar to vitamin C. Vitamin C does that too. 
So berberin becomes berberin, then it is converted to dihydroberberin, then it is converted back and it gives that hydrogen to these enzymes, disabling them. The result is that this particular bacteria will not produce as much of TMA and TMAO, which will mean that in our circulation, these elements, TMA and TMAO, will not be present in larger quantities and the inflammation of the blood vessels will not occur. Now, TMA can actually go to liver and be converted to TMAO over there as well, but that is a smaller quantity. The reason I mention that is that there were a thought that this may not be the microbiota, this may be liver because it is the liver that is converting TMA to TMAO, but it turned out that the liver's contribution is really like 1%. It's all the microbiota. So there's a question, Susan says, how long should one take berberin? I have been on 1000 mg a day for over a year to help control type two diabetes along, along with changing my entire diet. So Susan, in theory, or the way it is used in China and other places, they just take berberine as a regular part of their... So as you can see from the study that they're saying it is very much like vitamins. So they take it as a regular part when needed. So I take it as well. I take 500 milligrams. So I'm going to actually, after the study, up that to one gram by 500 in, in the morning and 500 in the evening. And I, I would just continue to take it. It's a very cheap, inexpensive product. And think about it. There is how many more medical products do we know that actually reduce the plaque sizes? Other than saying that, hey, reduce the body weight, and then that would start pulling the lipid-related products out. Here we have berberine that is showing that it is actually helping. Right? So that's interesting. Okay, so now I want to read the abstract. The abstract, so you may be thinking, what is TMAO? Trimethylamine N-oxide, derived from the gut microbiota, is an atherogenic metabolite. So this little molecule that comes from the bacteria present in our gut is atherogenic. That means when it goes in our circulation, produced by the bacteria, then absorbed through the gut, goes into the circulation, it causes inflammation of the blood vessels. Then that would then cause atherosclerosis to develop. This study investigated whether or not berberine could reduce TMAO production in the gut microbiota. Effects of berberine on TMAO production in the gut microbiota, as well as on plaque development, in atherosclerosis were investigated in the culture of animal intestinal bacteria, HFD-fed animals, and atherosclerotic patients. So this one paper actually have many experiments, some in vitro or some actually in vivo but animal models and some human. We found that oral berberine in animals lower TMAO biosynthesis in intestine through interacting with the enzyme coenzyme of choline, trimethylamine, lyase, which I just mentioned, and flavin-containing flavin monooxygenase. This action was performed by berberine's metabolite dihydroberberin, a reductive berberine by nitro reductase in the gut microbiota. So there, in this bacteria, there is an enzyme called nitroreductase that takes the berberine and converts that into dihydroberberine. And then it keeps fluctuating back and forth in that process. It keeps reducing protons. Protons go and attack these little enzymes and disable them. And all of a sudden, TMA and TMAO are not produced and the inflammatory mediators are released. Beautiful mechanism. I love it. So oral berberine decreased TMAO production in animal intestine, lowered blood TMAO and interrupted plaque formation in blood vessels in the HFD fed hamsters, which were given a lot of, uh, you know, cholesterol forming and uh, atherosclerotic plaque forming drugs uh, diet. Moreover, 
21 patients with atherosclerosis, exhibiting the average decrease of plaque score by 3.2% after oral berberine 0.5 gram BID, BID meaning twice a day for four months. And look at the p-value 0.005, sorry, 0.05, n is 21. So n is small, p-value is significant. Whereas the plaque score in patients treated with rosuvastatin, aspirin, clopidogrel, sulfate, or tica grilor, four months, n equals 12, increased the plaque by 1.9%. TMA and TMAO in patients decreased by 38 and 29% in feces. This is also very important. So if you said that really, is this something to do with the microbiota, then they are giving you this proof that if we look at the TMA and TMAO production uh, or presence in the feces, that was reduced as well, which is another proof that microbiota was modulated. And p-value is significant as well. And 37 and 35% in plasma. So reduce in feces, reduce in plasma as well. Berberine might treat atherosclerotic plaque at least partially through decreasing TMAO in, in a mode of action similar to that of vitamins. So Kim in Nature says, will it help with fibrins? So those fibrin strands that are going to be forming with the, with the plaque as part of the plaque formation, sure but not in general, at least not in this study. I'll keep presenting more of these mechanisms, so we might find some of that, but I haven't yet read it. So this was that study. Human study, it was done in 2017 in Jilin University, Changchun. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. N16 were uh, seven males and nine females. They were control 60.5 plus minus 8.9 was the age. Then N21, 12 males, 9 females, 63.7 plus minus 5.2 were the patients. Now think about it. 63 median age plus minus 5.2 at this age, having something over the counter that allows the plaques to not only reduce in growing, but actually reduce in sizes. That, that is a magical thing. So we looked at this before as well, so I'm not going to read it. And this is the discussion. This is the discussion. I think this is one. So for a few days, I believe that the topics that I'm presenting are very important for our healthy lives. And I, in my head, it seems a little cheesy if I say it, but in my head, it's always that your health matters. So can I do something that can bring more cheaper, inexpensive, easy solutions for this? So I hope you, you like it. Um, Mark says, I saw a video that said a study showed berberine inhibits muscle protein synthesis and therefore should not be taken every day. Please advise. So I will look into this. I have not seen that yet. Although I have done the study with the toxic effects and side effects, even in those, I did not see it. <laughs> Denise says it's not cheesy. It's, thank you very much. I'm so non-salesy <laughs> that saying things like... Anyways, so you know what I mean. T. Hunter says, is it better to take berberine or dihydroberberine? So dihydroberberine is automatically converted to dihydro. Berberine is converted to dihydroberberine inside the pathogens. So just berberine is good enough. Sue says, yes, it's a magical thing right enough. Absolutely. So 500 milligram B, BID, correct. So the, the bottle that I have, it is 500 milligram. I have been taking one in, in the evening, but I will, after Ramadan is over, I'll do one in the morning and one in the evening. Tika says, I'm, I'm late. My mom suffers from this. Thank you for this video. You're very welcome. And I'm going to actually hang up so that I do not make this video very long. Then people do not watch it. <laughs> so please like, subscribe, and share. There are links in the description if you would like to support this work. If you like this work, 
then you can support it as well. It's like $5 a month. You can become part of patrons or Substack, or you can use PayPal, or you can uh, buy Dr. Bean's account as well. And you can become a member of uh, this video channel. And you can actually buy me coffees as well. <laughs> so with this, thank you very much. Good night. Like, subscribe, and share. Bye for now. And one more thing, uh, I have the references on that page where I have other Berberine videos as well. Please tell me if that is better or all references in the description were better. Thank you very much. Bye for now.